Hi everybody, welcome to this new video on the Himalayan 450. But here today we are not going to talk about any new accessories. We'll talk about the infamous chassis brake of the Himalayan 450. Now there's a lot of confusion, especially created by Royal Enfield themselves, that it happened because of outside crash guards, or so to say, the non-OEM crash guards. So we waited and we waited until we came across some reviews and videos on YouTube again, telling the real reason why the chassis is breaking. And we came to the conclusion that obviously, it is not the non-OEM crash guards, it is also the OEM crash guard which is causing the same. But that clearly states to one fact, that crash guard can be whatever, but chassis can still be broken. So I'll just take you through the installation or rather the uninstallation of our crash guard to show what actually this crash guard uses to mount onto the chassis and the way we have designed it. So I'll just get a quick uninstall of the crash guard in this video right in front of your eyes and deliver the facts right before you. So we'll start opening all the bolts and remove the crash guard now. We'll make sure this is a one take video so that you don't really think that it has been edited or manipulated whatsoever. As you can see, this crash guard was installed in our factory on this motorcycle long back. Our bike has been running all and fine. But when we open this crash guard, open the bolts, we will come to a rather disturbing conclusion that we did not even touch the bolt in contention as told by all the press, all the hullabaloo, all the reporters, all the YouTubers that the bolt is to be challenged. But at Zana, we never touched that bolt. The main engine bolt was never touched. This crash guard, as you can see, is being removed. That bolt is open. We have just one more bolt to open here. And I'll just show you the way this crash guard has been constructed. So I'll just take this up. And just look. There's no bolt at this point whatsoever. We don't use any bolt to go through and attach to the frame, the chassis or the engine mount area. The main bolting point is this. This and the tail section here. This is just a plain collar and it goes inside and sits inside the chassis. We do not even torque, untorque or even touch this OEM bolt. It is still at the OEM torque setting. Now why did we do that? Obviously we know that this being an engine bolt, if it's opened or handled even, can lead to a lot of variation and vibration. Now just imagine, this is not the first kind of a motorcycle that Zana has handled in such a case. We have made frame sliders for motorcycles like the Z900 from Kawasaki, for Ducati Scrambler in which the engine itself is a stress member of the frame. And we made sure that engines or the engine bolts whatsoever are not tampered with. To just give you an example, in case of the Ducati Scrambler, the entire engine would fall out if this bolt is not taken care of. And it's funny to say that Zana would ignore such a big bolting point to make a crash guard. We wouldn't. This bolt, as you can see in the close-up now, is still at the torque which was set at the factory. We've never used it. But when we gave this issue some time to come to this reply, we also came across a few observations by some other riders. Very easily, this bolt got unbolted. It came out and got loose. Now that is a point of contention here. What about this bolting design when it comes out on itself? Now there's a lot of theories you can associate with it. But just think, is it only the crash guard? Or is it also that company which uses trial and error as a method on its motorcycles, especially the Himalayan. And you know, it was the BS3, which was a guinea pig for them. I'd rather go and say a lot of things, but then you guys are smart and you get the drift. 
Thank you for watching this video from Zana.